In this tutorial we are going to take a look at how to make our tank shoot projectiles. We will be able to shoot a projectile, it will be destroyed after some time or if it hits an obstacle. I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Again we are using Kenny assets, especially tower defense 2D assets. And uh, I have imported an, an additional sprite of a projectile. As always, uh, we have changed the pixel value per unit for our setup and filter mode to point no filter to get better graphics. Next thing is we have created a game object named barrel. So let's recreate it. We, we, uh, we want a point from which the projectiles will be fired. Uh, so we know that the turret is moving around and we want uh, the projectiles to be shoot from the turret. So we are creating a new uh, empty game object. Let's call it barrel. And we want to move it to the tip of our actual barrel. So from this point, uh, the projectiles will be shot. And the important part is that the red uh, arrow is pointing away from the barrel because we are using uh, this direction to shoot the projectiles. So they will be shot in this direction. And it is very important that uh, the, this uh, red arrow is pointing away. Now we will want to create a bullet prefab. So let's recreate it from scratch. We need to create a new empty object and let's name it bullet great and we want to add uh, as a child to it our sprite let's uh, drag it a little bit and you can see the sprite is rotated and this is not very good and also the trans uh, position is uh, changed so we need to reset the position of this uh, sprite also, let's check the bullet. Yes, it has the different position. So let's reset it. Okay, now we have zero, zero, zero. Uh, we can drag it a little bit to see the actual sprite. And we can see it is rotated. And as mentioned before, we want this bullet pointing in the red arrow direction because we are using red arrow as our uh, direction for movement. So we are going to rotate the sprite and that is why we have made it a child of bullet. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. Yep, that's the, that does it. And now the uh, last thing we need is to add to it rigid body and uh, a collider. Because as you have seen previously, the bullet has to be moving and it has to be colliding. So we are going to copy the rigid body from our tank turret, which has a frozen rotation and the gravity scale of zero. So let's copy the component and let's paste it onto the bullet. Paste it as a new component. Great. Now we need to add a collider. I have added to it a circle collider and you, have to, you can tweak it as you want. Now with a bullet prefab created, we simply drag it to the prefab uh, section in our assets uh, for reuse. Now we have the bullet, but our tank doesn't really know how to shoot it. So let's go to code and let's see how to, we can make it shoot the bullet. We are reusing the setup from our last tutorial about the tank movement. And in here we have uh, small changes. We are creating a bull value called is shooting. The value will change upon uh, pressing the shooting button and will be reset after shooting. This bull flag will allow us to create the mechanics that you only shoot one bullet per press of a spacebar and not constantly shooting it. And we also take a prefab game object bullet. So we need to assign the bullet to the player controller as you might be want to shoot something else. So it's much easier to pass it from player controller to our uh, player tank movement. And actually player tank movement should be now uh, renamed to player tank action uh, to keep it all uh, understandable. So let's uh, click Control R R in Visual Studio and change it to actions. 
Okay, so now we have uh, the reference value of the bullet prefab and we are creating in update method if shooting, if is shooting, so if the bull value is true, we will call a method shoot and also we will reset our flag is shooting to false. This isn't by no means a perfect solution, but it is a working solution that you can refactor later. Now let's go to the shoot method. The shoot method will be calling our movement script, which we have uh, refactored to be named action script. So let's do the reference value name and refactor it as well. So we will now be calling action script. So the reference for our player tank action to shoot a bullet. Last thing in the player controller script is in the player get player input method. We have is shooting and we, are, we need to call input dot get key dot key code space. And we set the result of this method. So we check if the the space bar was pressed and we save it as is shooting. So our flag, boolean flag. So those are all the changes in our player controller script. Let's go to the, our player um, action, uh, player tank action script. We will rename the script name. Uh, no, it is renamed. Okay. So only the uh, name in the Unity editor wasn't changed. That really doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so here we have also some changes. We now have a, a reference value for barrel object. So this is the same object that we have created here, the barrel. Uh, okay, now at the start, we are looking for the barrel object and because we have created this as a child of tank turret and we already have found tank turret, we are going to call transform.find and find barrel because this is the name that we have given the object. Let's reset the breakpoint. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we have called shoot method from our player controller and as you can see it takes bullet and uh, this is because now we can pass to the shooting method any object that we have created so our tank basically can create different kind of bullets depending on what you pass here and we are creating new game object called new bullet and uh, we are instantiating and as you can see, let's see the method uh, definition. You can see that we take game object original, vector three position and quaternion rotation. So this way we are passing bullet as the base game object, the original game object to be instantiated, a barrel object dot position. So the position where our bullet will be instantiated and as a quaternion rotation, so the rotation for the bullet, we will pass the same rotation as the tank turret has by calling tank turret dot transform dot rotation. This will make our bullet uh, in the rotated in the same direction as our turret is. Okay, we're back in the editor and we need to uh, set the values that we have previously uh, changed so uh, the script that because we have renamed the script but it was not renamed in the editor it, it will throw an error so we need to change the name of the script uh, to the same name as the class name uh, so we have called it actions so i need to add s okay now it's working so let's now we have the script applied to our tank player and we have our bullet prefab preset. If you don't have it, uh, you need to drag it into the player controller. And uh, I think that's it. Just be sure that you have barrel, uh, the, the same name as you are calling in the script. 
And let's press press play. Okay, it's, it's, it seems to be working. Now let's play. Let's press space. Then you can see the bullets are appearing, are being instantiated, but they are not moving. So let's take a look at the bullet prefab. Okay, so our prefab doesn't yet contain our bullet script that we will be creating shortly. Uh, make sure that your circle, circle collider is made into its trigger. Okay, so now let's move to the bullet script. The bullet script will contain public float speed, rigid body reference, and a public float self-destruction delay. I have misspelled it. Self-destruction time. And we preset it to 5. Good. Now we need to call in start a get component rigid body 2D and assign it as our rigid body 2D reference value and set the velocity so make the bullet move. And uh, what I was talking about, we are using transform.write as a direction, so the red arrow axis, and multiply it by speed that we have preset for every bullet. And the next, we call destroy game object. After self destruction time, the game object will be automatically destroyed. This is a very important step because as you create a new game object, as you instantiate it, you add it to memory. And because of that, uh, if you create too many objects, you might run out of memory in your computer. So it's very important to destroy everything you create, and especially things such as bullets that are created in, in multiple numbers. And so uh, also we are creating on trigger enter to the event, and it takes collider to the. It, it is a standard method. And we are checking for collision, game object, so we are checking this collision, and compare tag to see if the tag is obstacle. And upon uh, triggering uh, the collision with the obstacle, we will destroy the bullet. So let's preset the obstacle tag for our obstacle. Okay, so let's see our obstacle. And I have already created added tag obstacle. It must be spelled the same as we are checking the script or other way around. And we have set the obstacle tag to be obstacle. You might do it differently, you might do it with layers. It all depends on what you need and how big is your project. So now let's delete our prefab and let's test our game. So we can still move like we did before. And we now can press uh, spacebar and nothing happens because uh, you either didn't add the script or I didn't enable it on our bullet prefab. So let's do it. Either drag your bullet script onto our bullet prefab, or in my case I have to enable it. Set the speed to whatever you want and self-destruction time to whatever you want. And now let's press play. And our bullet is moving and after some time it will be destroyed. Come on, yes. It has uh, uh, disappeared from our hierarchy. And let's see what happens on the collision. The collision uh, has uh, occurred and we have destroyed our prefab. So basically, this is the basic way how you could create your uh, shooting mechanics. And as you can see, there's many bullets are appearing in the hierarchy. And that's why it is important to always destroy your prefabs either upon exiting the boundaries of your camera or your map or after some time so thank you guys for watching uh, i will leave a link to the project files in the description i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial goodbye